So I went off and did science for 20 years and biology and cut up dead people and all that kind of stuff. Um, went into health and safety and then three years ago I went, you know what? I'm going to do the thing I want. I'm going to do the thing I love. So I went off and did study the electronic music production. Um, but my partner is a games designer. So she, and she insisted that I bring this thing today. She calls it the rainbow machine because it all light, lights up bright and for some reason isn't working because technology. <laughs> um, so yeah, there you go. Um, let's test this again. No, it's still not working. Oh, okay, so what I, I did, um, what I do is, is I produce sounds, I produce music, sound design, uh, music. I do put a lot of production, so um, I actually have a company called Strange Band Audio, we're just starting, uh, and we do music and sound design and implementation for the games industry. Um, we are going to be all hanging out at the Global Game Jam at North Northern Sydney Institute this weekend, so if you're down there, we'll do your audio. Um, yeah, where was I? Oh yeah. So, um, I started doing this on absolutely no money. I had no income, I was unemployed, um, and I was like, oh, okay, how the hell am I going to do this? Oh, don't do that. Come on, there we go. Uh, so yes, how do you do this on no money? Well, the simple answer is you can't. It's not possible. But you can do it on the cheap. Uh, and then the way I did that was, was I bought this. I bought the rainbow machine. Because with that, I got this. And this is Ableton Live. This is the free version. And it's limited. You can only get eight tracks. So if, if I do that, like the, these, these various little tracks, oops, you can only do eight of them, which is the average song or live performance set. And this is designed for live performance. Uh, you'll have hundreds and hundreds of tracks, which I don't do. But I do get to put in 64 sounds. And that's what I've done here. Um, and a lot of this is, there's a bit of history in here. I've been building this, this set for months now. Um, and I always start it with this one, because um, what Claire was saying earlier about immersion and all that sort of stuff, and the history is great, but what brings a game to life, what turns it from a bunch of pictures on screen into something that genuinely is immersive is the sound. Without sound, and you can't ship a game without sound, it's just pictures on a screen. It doesn't really mean anything. So the first thing I always say to people when I'm talking about game audio is, is this. Hey, listen. And th these are all from games. Does anyone know what that one is? No. No, that's, that's um, Zelda. Zelda. That's right, Ocarina of Time. Navi, who navigates you around and says, hey, listen. Um, widely regarded as one of the most irritating game characters ever. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I, I do this, um, and I went and sourced a bunch of um, sounds from games uh, with a little bit of history, and it all started here. <coughs> Familiar? It's classic. This is my first, first game I played back in, oh, it would have been 1979 when I was playing it on my dad's Atari. And I hated it because I didn't have the coordination. <laughs> I still don't. Um, so yeah, I, 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 that, that in itself is a very simple sound. It's just uh, a synthesizer. It's just a, a, essentially a square wave. And it's very, very simple. Uh, and, and then things started to get a bit more complicated. I started producing things like this. This is obviously the sound of the 80s. <laughs> I, I, I like to try and keep them short because if it was just too much, it would be here all day. Um, uh, and then it gets a little bit more complicated still. <laughs> but game audio is, is the thing that really dr drags you in and gives it a sense of feeling and gives you feedbacks on when you've done something or achieved something. Uh, um, You all know what that means. <laughs> you all know what this means. 
You know what's just happened. Um, oh yeah, this one. Here we go. They, they can give you a sense of achievement. They can start making you tweak your emotions. I've never played Silent Hill, but I don't want to now. <laughs> I have to turn this one off. Uh, go away. There we go. Right, okay. So, um, oh yeah, I put this one in just for the sheer hell of it because it's one of my favorite sounds ever. Um, oh God, where's it gone? <laughs> no, it's. I've managed to lose the lightsaber sound. No, there it is. There we go. I actually wanted to turn up with like a toy lightsaber and hit that, but I couldn't find one. My son hid it, he's lost it. Anyway, so yeah. Um, one of the things I actually wanted to do today was, was um, just, this thing's been, I, I want to be wanting to share this with somebody, so you're getting it, so. Um, with, with sounds, there's a lot of stock sounds that you can get that are free, that are now essentially considered open source because they've been used so many times in so many places that it's no longer copyrightable. And the classic one uh, is a scream. And, and you've all heard this. You know that scene in Star Wars and Death Star where Han Solo's running around and he shoots a stormtrooper and he falls off the bridge? <laughs> and there's another one. That's the Wilhelm scream. There's another one called the Howie scream, which sounds like this. Now that sounds familiar, doesn't it? But it's probably not the Howie scream itself that you've heard, because if you speed it up and pitch the shift a little, um, shift the pitch a little, it sounds like this. It becomes a Tie Fighter. But if you speed it up even more and pitch the shift, shift the pitch even more, it becomes from Half Life. <laughs> And now you will never, ever be able to unhear that again. <laughs> You'll take that to your graves. So yeah, I, I just went, OK, I'm, I'm going through this. And I'm going, um, oh yeah, this is one of the things that for me, that um, when I, I, I kind of got into game audio, I suddenly realized that, hang on, there's, there's something that, um, that got me into this uh, 20 years ago. And I didn't even realize it. Um, and that was Quake. If you've ever played it, that's the sound of the quad damage pickup that you get that makes things explode when you shoot them, which was a lot of fun at the time. But the music and sound design for that, both of it, was done by Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails, who, and this is the, the first instance of what's, what I like to refer to, and I've been teaching this, uh, is the sonic palette of games, which is the... Uh, when, when you talk about sonic palette in music, it's, it's the... Uh, entire tonal range of an instrument or the entire tonal range of a composer's body of work. But when you apply it to games, it becomes the cohesive sound design and music of the game all over. And this was the first time that a homogenized and cohesive sonic palette was ever developed and ever used. And that's what got me into game audio. In hindsight, let me just quickly do this. So yeah, um, doing it on, with, 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 you can't do it on, on no money. You can't do it free. At the end of the day, I'm trying to make a living off this, and I want someone to pay me for it. <laughs> um, but if you're doing it yourself, you, there are sources you can get. You can go to the likes of freesound.org. You can get those sounds. A lot of them are Creative Commons. There's a lot of Creative Commons sounds out there, and you can get that. You can. Persuade someone to make your music for free. There are actually um, free music generator websites for games. And you can tell it the type of game that you're doing, the kind of tempo you want. And it will just produce you some basic electronic music. They're great. But if you actually want to release it, I wouldn't. <laughs> They're only going to do you so much. Uh, if you really want to sell your game, if you want to make a really good game, 
you've got to invest in the audio, especially in VR. Um, Rhett, your VR is it was great, looks great, but the, the, if, if the one thing that makes a VR experience wonderful is the sound. Uh, I'm doing a lot of work in VR at the moment, so it's, it's kind of the future of the industry. Is, is like everyone's going, VR's great, but if VR wants to be taken seriously, people have to start teaching audio. Uh, and that's, that's, that's a personal gripe because games, people don't get taught audio. But that's why I'm here, so yes. Uh, how am I doing for time? Uh, you're right. Okay, because I'm kind of running out of things to do. I mean, I can just sit here, oh, court, sit here playing sounds at you. I mean, I've. Oh, okay, right. Because um, one of the things I, I love about game audio, and one of my favourites is, um, I say Half Life, Portal, and Portal Two. Uh, so I just Target put these. Acquired. I put these in there because I love them. <laughs> uh, I love the turrets. Are you still there? It's a great use of sound. It's a great characterisation, and it's become it's become a kind of sonic branding, really, because like um, sonic branding's like you know the the. Pentium chime, things like that. It's a little sound that people instantly associate with a product. And this has worked really well for Valve in this because people automatically associate this with the franchise and go out and buy the merchandise. So it works. Um, uh, do you know what? I'm going to throw it open now. Anyone got any questions? Want to know something? Yes. This is Ableton Live. This is the free version. So it's limited to eight tracks. Could you repeat the question, though, for the, for the mic? And oh, yeah, sorry. You said, uh, what, what version is this? What software is this? Uh, this is Ableton Live. Uh, there are, uh, this is a digital audio workstation. This is where all the music production or sound production begins. It's in here. Uh, there are, yes. Oh, that is actually um, Assassin's Creed. Yes, it's the theme music for the third one, Revelations. Uh, it was written by a friend of mine, Winfred Phillips. You know what? Here's the thing, right? Um, a lot of the sounds you hear in games aren't the sounds that things really make. Um, I'm just trying to think of examples. Like a sword drawing. A sword doesn't make that classic ching. It doesn't happen. That's not what they sound like. Um, and, and a lot of the times when you think, OK, we need a sound for something, and you go and record that sound, it doesn't sound like what you want it to do. So you have to fake something to make it sound like the thing people expect. <laughs> uh, what was it? Oh, um, we, need, we needed a hiss or something, so we were ending up opening Coke bottles. So it really worked. Um, anyway, back to the, the, the doors, digital audio workstations. Um, there are free ones out there. Uh, there's, there's, a few, there's a few Linux doors, which are, I've never used because I don't have Linux. Um, there is one, there's, there's LMMS, which is complicated and clunky, but it's free. There's one called Stage Light, which is pretty basic, but it's really kind of aimed at people who just want to throw loops out there so in, in, into things and just quickly compose something. It's OK. It's great for beginners, I suppose. Um, this, uh, this is the, the most powerful one on the, out there. It's, it's, it's great. It does all the things. The, the other one I, I use uh, is... I'll just fire it up because why not? Is Reaper. Um, this is not free. Not free. But to pay for it, it costs $60. And if you don't want to pay for it, you don't have to. It will keep working. And it'll just throw up this screen until you actually pay for it. But it's full. Uh, un. un crippled by anything. So it's, it's actually a really good um, recording software. It's basically a, a clone of a software called Pro Tools by Avid Media. And Pro Tools retails on sale 
for about $1,600. Um, I don't want to have to pay that. I can't afford that. Uh, the <laughs> going back to Ableton Live, this, the full version of this, uh, is about a thousand dollars. And if you want the push controller, that's it's basically the son of this. Um, if you want the push controller, that's about another. I hate it when that happens. Uh, that's another thousand dollars. So. Uh, Audio production is not cheap, unlike game software. Sorry, do you have a question? And not so much a question, but um, just identifying that sound for characters and villains in particular. I'm just um, thinking of Bioshock, the showdown. Yes. Um, just makes the entire game and really it just has an entire sort of experience of just yes. um, experiencing this character and just this sort of uh, oral distortion of like, mind games. No, you're quite right. I mean, um, it's a lot of the time it's it's the the sound, the the timbre, and, and the way they they produce that sound um, that brings something to life. A, another good example is is actually going back to Portal. Um, well done. Remember, the Aperture Science Bring Your Daughter to Work Day is the perfect time to have her tested. What would Portal be without Glados? It would be nothing. It'd be a great a little puzzle game, but eh but it's GLaDOS that brings it to life. And, and, and it's such wonderful, wonderful production because um, Ella McLean is an opera singer by trade. And she managed to talk in this monotonous voice and they just put a slight vocoder on it. Very, very simple, but very, very effective. Um, yeah, so I'm, anything else? Yes, at the back. Sorry? Reaper works really good in Linux. Reaper works really good in Linux. Great. Good to know that. I didn't know that. I don't really use Linux, but um, we're here for it, so good to know. Um, <laughs> yes? Um, with, on the subject of voice modulation, can you make any recommendations about the software just to um, like tweak a voice like the GLaDOS or, or like a Darth Vader kind of? Um, for, for that, for, for, sorry? Yeah, I was about to. <laughs> uh, for uh, software for voice modulation, um, it's, it's not really a, a software as such. It's what they call VSTs, which is vir Virtual Studio Technology. So if I go to my plugin section here uh, and go to, where are we? Um, I want to go VST, local. Here we go. So, um, VST plugins. The folder's just changed its organization. I hate that. Um, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Blue cat. All results. Blue cat, okay. Something's going wrong here. Okay, um, I was actually trying to find the, the flanger because a flanger is a, an audio effect. Um, has anyone watched Stargate, the TV series? Okay, you all know the, the gold aliens and they all have that strange, freaky voice. All they've done with that is shifted the pitch down and added a flanger to it, which gives it that modulating voice. Uh, and there are hundreds of VSTs out there that will modulate sound. So you can find flangers, you can find compressors, you can find vocoders, you can find, let's see what's in here. Uh, Oh, here we go. So I'm just going to drop this phaser on, let's drop it on this channel because then if I play this, oh, 
Uh, I'll crank up that right. I want to make it really obvious. Now, if you do that to a voice, it's going to sound really freaky. It's going to sound really alien. So, and a lot of it is experimentation. I and mean, people do go to games conferences and the, the sound conferences and give talks on how to create monster voices, just monsters or just aliens or something like that, how they've done it and in various different ways. And a lot of it is experimentation. Try things, play around with it, see what sounds cool. At the end of the day, that's it. Yes? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, I, I, I do document pretty much everything I do. Uh, you find that anyone working in audio keeps meticulous notes. My notes aren't meticulous. They're just sc bits scrawled on paper, and I'll find it 10 years later and go, what was that about? But then I'll experiment with it and find what I did before or something new. And then that's the beauty of this, is that it's forever evolving, especially as technology evolves. So... But yeah, you, you, essentially, if you write it, you've got to write it down. It's like writing, keeping your recipes. Well, you can't go fire and just save it. Oh, yeah, I do that anyway. I mean, this is saved. So. You reload that file in 10 years' time and get the same effect. Yeah, in that same software, because as soon as they release a new version, you can't open the old file. <laughs> Then, because we're just about to start lunch. Um